thanks to everyone for joining in today. My talk is about optimizing FCC gasoline octane and sulfur performance in the new world of ultra low sulfur tier three gasoline. We will start with the poll question. Is your refinery tight on octane when running at full rates? The tier three gasoline standard mandates a 10 ppm average annual sulfur limit on gasoline in the United States. It was enacted in 2014 and phased in from 2017 to 2020. Since 2015, I have been tracking the average sulfur in gasoline in the United States. Gasoline sulfur reduction toward 10 ppm has been slow. This is the US average ppm sulfur in gasoline which has been creeping down toward 10 ppm for 10 years. Note that the 10 ppm requirement actually took effect for most refiners in 2017, indicated by the white bars. Yet the actual US pool sulfur has stayed around 20 right up to the final day of reckoning, which is upon us now. Many US refiners will rely on FCC gasoline desulfurizers for tier three. Here I will be discussing the gasoline desulfurizer as a black box, feeding a full range FCC gasoline and producing desulfurized FCC gasoline that goes to the blend pool. Two main reactions go on inside. They are desulfurization and olefin saturation. Olefin saturation is an inevitable side reaction that destroys octane. The olefins in the feed are much higher octane than the alkanes produced when they are saturated. In 2015, some of my clients saw the need to better understand the performance of this unit, especially when it is run at high severity to make ultra low sulfur tier three gasoline. We started a three year research project that I'm going to review now. It had three phases, pilot plant testing, field testing, and optimization. These are the pilot plants we use for all our hydro processing pilot plant work. They are owned and run by Sea Solutions Limited in Thessaloniki, Greece. We ran tests on four gasoline desulfurization catalysts side by side in a 20 day pilot plant program. This shows product sulfur versus time for the first 12 days of the pilot plant run for two catalysts in green and white. There were five test periods, each was held for four days. The first period, is four days at low temperature, which we call the cold condition. The second day, four day period is at warm temperature and the third four day period is at hot temperature. As we go from cold to warm to hot, the sulfur goes down. The white catalyst gives much lower sulfur levels indicating higher desulfurization activity. This is the same data now charted as product sulfur versus temperature for the three test periods. Here I have identified the green catalyst. It is the Axons catalyst. The white catalyst is the best catalyst tested in this program. It has higher desulfurization activity as shown by the, by the clear large separation between these data points. Higher desulfurization activity is a good thing but we must also consider olefin, satura olefin saturation selectivity. For that, we look at this chart of olefins in the product versus sulfur in the product. And we want to look at this chart moving from right to left. As we move from right to left, we are increasing temperature from cold to hot. The product sulfur goes down and product olefins go down as we saturate more olefins. There is no significant difference in olefin retention selectivity between these two catalysts. That's why I am calling the white catalyst the best catalyst. It has much higher desulfurization activity with equal olefin retention and equal octane retention. The higher activity is good and it comes with no significant selectivity penalty. To rank gasoline desulfurization catalysts, we use a two-dimensional tiered ranking. The vertical tiers indicate delta activity in equivalent degrees start of run temperature, 
with thresholds on the vertical scale of 10 degrees F per tier. The columns separate catalysts into two tiers based on selectivity with a threshold of 5 weight percent olefin saturation between tiers. To make a better catalyst, you want to move up and to the right on this grid. Here is where the green and white catalysts were placed in the tiered ranking grid. They showed a large difference in desulfurization activity and indistinguishable selectivities. The green is our reference catalyst. The white is an available commercial catalyst. The main goal of our 2015 pilot plant program was to define this grid and place test catalysts in it so that our clients would use the ranking to choose catalysts for refills. That goal was accomplished. This pilot plant program is covered in our annual research report number six. If you have an FCC gasoline desulfurizer, Research Report 6 will certainly be of great value to, to help you choose refill catalyst. It is the perfect catalyst testing program because the necessary work is already done for you, the cost is negligible, and we deliver it at the speed of light. Our second year of Tier 3 research was on the field testing of commercial desulfurizers and is covered in Research Report 7. The goal was to measure performance of commercial gasoline desulfurizers, as many as possible, and preferably one running to make 10 ppm sulfur gasoline pool. Here is the layout for a good field test you can do in a three-day period to show exactly what is happening in your gasoline desulfurizer. Looking first at the columns, you will run at four reactor temperatures shown here as cold, cool, warm, and hot. At each temperature, sample the product and measure sulfur, octane, and importantly, you will run the blood tests. Here is a chart of octane loss versus product sulfur from such a field test. We call this the performance curve, octane versus product sulfur. Again, we look at this chart from right to left. As we move from right to left, increasing severity to lower gasoline sulfur, we simultaneously destroy octane by saturating more olefins. When you start pushing your unit to make 10 ppm gasoline, octane loss accelerates rapidly. We measured this curve in 2016 on a commercial unit. It showed the same high octane loss we measured in our pilot plant studies. This orange curve we call the ultimate curve because our data indicates it is like an ideal case, the best one can do in real life. But here is the critical point. The orange curve is what the industry has been thinking is typical. It is not typical. Our data shows US gasoline desulfurizers are much more clustered around the red curve. This difference between the orange and red curves between expected and actual is unexpected octane loss. It translates into billions of dollars per year of octane destroyed. This is the main reason I disagree with the industry consensus, which says tier three will have no financial impact on refiners. This refinery, when they did their field test and measured this red curve, concluded they could not afford that much octane loss and remain profitable. They invested some capital to move their curve up and that paid off very well for them. Significant improvements can be achieved quickly with little or often no capital investment. Here is another field test example in red. This refinery tested at seven reactor temperatures as shown by the seven red data points. The gray curve is what we predicted before the test. During this test, the blood test data revealed something that was not understood before that was unnecessarily adding to octane loss. The refinery team made a change that caused the curve to move up to the predicted gray curve. They moved their curve up by two ron octane immediately. What is this worth? Here's a rule of thumb. Saving one octane is worth $500,000 per month 
for every 10,000 barrels per day of capacity. That's at typical cost to replace the lost octane by increasing reforming severity. In retail value at the pump, octane is worth 15 times that. The bottom line is the octane destruction for tier three gasoline is measured in billions of dollars per year. One of our blood tests is a hydrocarbon type analysis that measures the weight percent olefins by carbon number. In this example from a field test, the dark red is the feed and the brighter red with much less olefins is the product. The olefins are in carbon number five to nine range with the peak at carbon number seven, showing that C7 olefins are most abundant in this case. The space between the feed and product curves is 51% olefin conversion, which caused seven ron octane loss. This difference is a direct measure of the cause of octane destruction. Most of the U.S. octane supply comes from cat crack gasoline. When your gasoline desulfurizer converts half your cat cracker olefins to low octane alkanes, that destroys a lot of your octane barrel production capacity. Which leads to the third topic and the third year of our research program, optimization. This is covered in research report eight. The time has come to start optimizing these FCC gasoline desulfurizers. They are ripe for optimization and the tools are available and ready for you to use. Don't accept your gasoline desulfurizer being a black box to you. Start using 21st century tools like our blood tests to see what's happening in the reactor and use our performance curve model for optimization. These modern tools shine the light on octane destruction. With the performance curve model and the blood tests, it is easy to pinpoint the causes of octane destruction and quantify their dollar impact then you can predict how your performance curve will move with changes you can make. These two diagrams are pictures from our performance curve model, which is a spreadsheet that produces the charts I've been showing. Once we have analyzed your feed, the performance curve model accurately estimates your curve. This curve is for a full range feed. A common investment option is to add a splitter that causes the lightest olefins to bypass the desulfurizer and not get converted. The dashed curve shows the calculated benefit, which is substantial on this feed. The effect of the splitter is calculated using the measured distribution of the feed olefins and the industry's best available octane model for calculating octane as a function of composition. Different feeds are very different in their vulnerability to octane loss. Here are the curves for a different feed, which is much less vulnerable to octane loss. If you change crude or FCC operation or cut points, expect your performance curve to move. This spreadsheet accurately calculates how all those changes affect the performance curve. Now, I am going back to the first feed and removing the dash curve for the splitter. And we can ask, what if we could improve the inherent selectivity of the process? That is the relative rates of desulfurization and olefin saturation in the reactor. This purple curve shows the effect of a 40% selectivity improvement, which can be achieved with a new process that's available today. That process is offered by Halder Topsol. The purple curve shows the effect of a fundamental improvement in octane retention that is achieved by changes to the catalyst system and process conditions within the Halder Topsol process. And if you use the new Topsol process with the splitter, here is that combined effect from the solid black curve to the dashed purple curve. You see how much octane can be saved and you can calculate how much it would be worth to quit operating on that black curve 
and destroying all those octane barrels. The performance curve model has been in use by our clients since 2016 to make better decisions on all these handles for optimization. If you are constrained on octane and have a gasoline desulfurizer, your engineers and planners should certainly have this tool for fast, accurate performance estimates and for making decisions to save octane when making tier three gasoline. The performance curve model is included with purchase of research report seven. So you will have it for your own use. It is not an annual license. It is included with a one-time cost of buying report seven. These three annual reports came from our shared cost multi-client tier three research project. Our research reports also include blood tests run on your current feed and product samples and six months unlimited support by phone and email on your use of the information. And each report includes dozens of attachments like these published research on the topic. We scoured the literature to find, buy, study, and apply the best of a wealth of available tier three related research. It is included as attachments to our reports. Until recently, this process has not attracted much attention among refining engineers, certainly nothing like cat cracking, hydro cracking, or reforming. If you want to, you can quickly become an industry expert on this process by studying these attachments and our three years of research along with your experience. Finally, all our research include a market analysis section with research and analysis on the other aspects that affect profitability of tier three gasoline. It pulls together know-how from many disciplines. My focus today was refinery technology, but our reports and attachments cover all these other aspects too, as they relate to tier three. Earlier, I mentioned the last item on this list, gasoline credits as an optimization issue. In the tier three world, refiners should know their incremental cost for sulfur reduction. They should know how that compares to the competition and to the current and likely future cost of credits. The optimal pool sulfur level is not 10 ppm for everyone. Maybe you should make some deals with other refiners, blenders, retailers, or distributors. Maybe your strategy is to be a supplier of credits. We have studied the gasoline credit markets in depth and are directly connected into the sulfur credit market. Recently, we purchased best available information on sulfur credit prices, past and present. It is up to date and is included with these reports. I really hope you make the move to join our client list. It's easy to do. All these companies did it. Just sign or convince your boss to sign a purchase order and we deliver it the next day. Nothing in any of our reports is confidential. You don't need a lawyer. Your standard purchase order terms and conditions on the internet work fine. Thanks a lot for your attention. We are ready for questions and discussion.